All right, so I think we can get started. Welcome to the Zoom Beyond the Basics session. My name is Faye Walter. I'm the Academic Technology Services Director for Dedman College. So I hope that you were able to attend my Rediscovering the Basics session yesterday, but if you weren't, no worries. They have all been recorded. Um, I do want to make sure that you know what this session is going to cover. Stick around, even if you're not interested. Um, but just so you know, the Rediscovering the Basics session went over everything you need to run a successful meeting or a successful class. Beyond the basics, we're going to focus on those extra things that you don't necessarily need, but they might help engagement or entertainment or anything to make your Zoom session stand out, whether it's a meeting or a class. So I am going to start by showing you an important feature of Zoom. So you should all be able to see my entire Zoom screen. This is the Zoom desktop app. You should have this on your computer. And periodically, you should click your photo or initials in the top right and select check for updates. So this will tell you if there are any new Zoom updates and you can open the release notes from Zoom that tell you all the new things that have been released or are upcoming. Most of the things we'll go over today are new and even if you've been using Zoom since March, maybe you didn't know about them because they're brand new. A lot of them have been around, but a lot of them are new. So um, we'll get right in. The first thing I wanna cover that I did not cover in our basics course was when you're scheduling a meeting, registration and requiring authentication. So hopefully you know how to do this, but I'll run briefly over it. Your title is the name of your meeting, when and duration are the first time it meets and how long it lasts. You can make it a recurring meeting, choosing multiple days of the week. Right now we're gonna focus on registration. So why would you have registration on a meeting? Some users choose to have registration if they're going to do pre-assigned breakout rooms Others are having an event that's not necessarily a class and they want to know who has signed up. So we had registration on this meeting, so you had to sign up so that we knew how many people to anticipate. So if you require registration and it's a recurring meeting, it'll ask if they need to register once or for all of them. For the sake of this, I'm going to just turn off the recurring meeting and simply require registration. So I'll get into what that looks like after I've saved the meeting. So on your security, you have the option to require authentication to join. So if we select this, you can choose that only SMU users can join this meeting, or you can choose that people that join this meeting have to be signed into Zoom. So they can't just click join, click the link and not be signed into a Zoom account. Now, why would you do this? Um, this can also be used for the pre-assigned breakout rooms because pre-assigning breakout rooms to the individual groups, you have to know their email address. Zoom doesn't know their email address if they're not signed in or if they didn't register. So that is why you could use these two options. Or if you're having a staff meeting and you want to make sure that only the people that need to be there are there. This can get tricky um, with the SMU users only and signing into Zoom. So if you choose SMU users only and a student opens the Zoom app and puts in their email address and their password, but doesn't choose the sign in with SSO, they're not signed in to their SMU Zoom account. So although they're signed in with their email address, they're not an SMU user. So this could get tricky if you choose to use this for your class, I highly recommend not turning it on for the first class session, explaining how and why you're doing it, 
and then turning it on for the second one and also putting it in your syllabus that they have to be signed in to the SME Zoom in order to join class. So once I save this meeting, I'll go over some of the registration options. So if you choose to have registration on your meeting, you can edit that registration, automatically approve people, anyone that registers gets in, or you can choose to manually approve people. If you know this is a closed meeting and you only want these people registered, you can manually approve them. You can have it send you an email when someone registers. You can close the registration after the event date, allow them to share on social media. You can also include what you ask for on the registration. First and last name are automatically required. You can add all of these built-in things or create custom questions. So if you plan to have registration for your Zoom class, you could add on, on this custom question, tell me what you're hoping to learn from this class or tell me what your experience is in X topic of the class. Neither of these things are required for your class, but they are options. So I wanted to make sure I went over them. And that is all I'm gonna cover on scheduling meetings. So I will pause for any questions pertaining to that. And by the way, you are all muted and to keep in the time limit, you will continue to be unless we have time at the end. So if you have any questions at all, put them in the chat. Okay, and I think we can move forward. So, um, so bringing in a speaker from the outside, um, let me show you that is pertaining to this. So let me show you this one more time. I don't want you to get confused by the option of adding an alternative host to a meeting. So if you have this option here to add an alternative host, an alternative host has to be on your Zoom account. So you can only add an SMU user here. So if you have an outside speaker that needs to join your class, you simply send them the link, invite them to the meeting, once they have joined, you find them in the list and you make them a co-host. So, um, so I hover over your name, I click more, and then I choose to make co-host. That gives them the option to share their screen and control everything in the meeting, aside from breakout rooms, but that is coming. Okay, so just a couple... Um, just a couple quick settings that I wanna show you on your Zoom app. So anytime you wanna look at your settings, you can click this gear icon and it will open here. So I have on the share screen setting, show my Zoom windows to other participants when I am screen sharing. You should not ever need this unless you're doing a Zoom tutorial. That is why right now you can see this and you can see my mute microphone and all of my stuff. So don't get confused by that. Another thing on here is under general to use dual monitors. If you have two monitors, you have to have this selected in order to get the full functionality. So if you have two monitors and you have it checked to use dual monitors, when you share your screen, every video gallery view will pop to the other screen so that you can see everyone while you're sharing your screen. And one thing to note on that, under your video settings, you have the option to choose up to 49 participants show on the gallery view or 25. Now, if you have an older machine, you might not have this option, um, but check for that to see if you do. Okay, so next in the video, Next in the video is going to be virtual background. So right now I have a virtual background. Some of your computers might not allow you to use a virtual background and I apologize if that is the case, but if you can, you can go to this arrow next to the video icon and click choose virtual background. Or if you're not in a meeting and you pull up the settings, background and filters. 
So Zoom has some that are built in. You can use photo photos or videos. But if you attended some of the other sessions, it, the, it is important to not be distracting, especially when you're teaching. This would distract me if I were a student. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend a video. So you can upload your own photos by clicking the plus sign here. And it allows you to add an image or a video from your computer. The I have a green screen option is only if you have a literal green screen behind you. If I click this, it's going to think I have one and it gets very confused. So some of the other video options adjust for low light. If you have it on auto, Zoom will see if you need to be brighter. OK. Are there any questions about any of that? And next we'll get into some participant views. I wish I could turn my lights in my office off of auto because they turn off on me a lot. So there is one question about the staff settings and faculty settings. Um, Martha Mendez is asking if these are two different settings. No, no. So um, if you have an SMU licensed account, which all faculty and staff do, you have the same, the same settings or same options for settings. Okay, so um, you can all see my entire Zoom screen with everyone's photos and videos, right? Can I get a thumbs up if, okay, I see a nod. OK, so there has been um, a lot of talk and questions about this new spotlight feature. So I want to make sure you know how to do that. So if I am teaching and I want to make sure that everyone is looking at me, I can choose these three dots on my video and spotlight me for everyone. So now you should have a forced view of me and my shared screen. If we were just talking, then it would be just me. Um, I can also say, let me make this a little smaller. I want everyone to also see Tanya. <laughs> So you can choose up to nine people to spotlight, nine videos. And while you have people spotlighted, students can't pin their own videos. But if I remove these spotlights, then you should all have the option to change your view. You can pin any video that you want. If you want to make sure you always see the instructor, or always see um, the video of another camera view from the class or someone else's video, you can pin whatever you want. Um, this is, if you have it in speaker view, they're the main view. If you pin, but then you have it in gallery view, they're always on the first page, even if, you, um, even if they're not speaking. Okay, does that make sense? Does anyone have questions about pinning or spotlighting videos? Okay, so now the, the fun parts, we're gonna talk about all the ways. So this, what we are in right now is a regular Zoom meeting. So everything that I am doing now can be done in any of your Zoom meetings. So sharing content. When we began this meeting, I was sharing this photo, but you didn't see all of the Zoom and trash and all of this because I chose to share a portion of my screen. So especially if you're teaching from home and you have only one screen and you need that PowerPoint view with your notes at the bottom, you can choose portion of screen, highlight what you want to be shared and the students are only going to see that portion. Another thing on here is you can share music or computer sound only. 
So I have seen a few faculty, I love this idea, by the way, that in the beginning of their class, when they join early, they have music playing so that students can, you know, not necessarily be talking and they're getting everything ready and music is playing in class. Some of them have their screen shared and they're sharing a YouTube video, which is fine. When you do that, you have to choose share sound. You can also choose optimize for video clip to speed up the frame rate and make sure it's a smooth viewing experience for your participants. But if you just want to share the sound of your computer and you don't need to share a video, you can choose music or computer sound only. And actually, I'm going to stop sharing altogether and then share just this. So at this point, you should hear some music, but you don't see that I'm sharing my screen. So I have that playing through Zoom, not through my microphone. So you hear my calming music before class and it's not interrupting. I can keep you know, prepping my PowerPoint, doing whatever I need to do. You don't see any of that. Okay. One second. Okay. So now another advanced screen share option is content from a second camera. I did go over this in the basics because this is what you would do if you have a document camera or if you have um, a camera that you want to point at the student view. Now, when you share content from a second camera, that is your content you're sharing. You cannot share your screen, your PowerPoint, and a second camera, it's one or the other. So when I choose content from a second camera, I have a second camera connected. This is everything we're gonna talk about if you're curious. So this is my document camera. It automatically becomes the share screen. I can also switch this camera and now I'm the bigger picture and that camera becomes smaller and you would see it in the gallery view. So that is sharing content from a second camera. You can also change your camera, change your camera selection on the Zoom settings here, arrow. If you wanna just share this as your video, of course, if you have a virtual background, that will not work. And we'll talk about that in just a moment too. Okay. So the last thing about sharing content, another way to share, and this is new, it's still in beta. I don't know that I would recommend it unless you're just being fun, but I wanna show you anyway, because this is beyond the basics. So in advance, we have the option to share a PowerPoint as a virtual background. So if I choose this, it's gonna ask me to find my PowerPoint on my desktop. And once I do that, my PowerPoint is my virtual background. So I can move through my slides and be in front of them. Now your hand will fade into the background if you try to point at something. And I never know which direction I'm trying to go, but if I wanted to be Vanna White, I could use the PowerPoint as a virtual background. Again, I don't know that this would be more beneficial um, instead of distracting, but it's something that you can try out and play with if you would like. Okay, any questions about sharing screen, video, virtual background, any of that? Yes, there are a few questions okay. about virtual background. Okay. So, um, Diana, Diana Newton is asking, is there um, a way to upgrade computers to allow green screens? So um, to upgrade your computer to allow green screens? Or any setting in the computer, I think that's what she meant. Okay, so on the virtual background settings here, if you click, I have a green screen, that means you literally have a green screen behind you. If your computer is not 
um, up to the speed and processing that Zoom needs for you to use a virtual background without a green screen, you have to have a green screen or a better processor on your computer. Um, so it, it's without the green screen or if you have a little literal green screen behind you, you would check this box. Okay, so for now I am actually gonna turn off my virtual background. Because I wanna show you some things. Okay, are there any other questions about the sharing screen, sharing content, advanced sharing features? Okay. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you about sharing my screen, and I hope I can show you this. If not, I will just describe it. So if I am sharing Okay, actually, okay, so I can't show you this, but I can describe it. So typically, when you share your screen, or I guess before, when you shared your screen, you had a little film strip of six students max that you could see on top of your shared content. And this is if you just have one monitor, which a lot of you do and I do. So this is what I deal with too. So when you're sharing your screen, you have your content shared and then a small film strip of six students. Well, now that can be more than six, you can move it around and you can resize it. So before there was a little minimize button, there were two squares and there were three squares, I think. And the three squares gave you six people. The most recent people that spoke would be at the top, but it was only six people. Now there's another icon. It's nine little squares. And if you click that, it gives you more options and it gives you a little drag bar in the corner where you can drag it and make it bigger to show even more people. So you could have half of your screen be your students and the other half be your shared content. And now your students are only going to see the shared content, which is why I can't show it to you. Because if I shared that, you would see what I'm sharing and then I have the other half of my screen to see you. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is polls. Do we have any questions about anything I've talked about so far before we move on to polling? One quick question. Um, Sylvia Jones asked if there is a difference between spotlighting and pinning. Okay, so spotlighting is a, um, well, as a participant, do you have the option to spotlight? If you click the three dots on someone's video, do you see spotlight? No, okay, so that's the difference. So as the host, I can spotlight someone for everyone to see. As a participant, if there's not a spotlight, you can pin and no one knows that you've pinned them. It's just for your view. You see them either larger in the speaker view or you have them saved to the top row of the gallery view. So pinning is for participants. Spotlighting is sending it out to everyone as the host. So I saw a question that just came in about sharing a PowerPoint but still being able to see your notes. If you have only one monitor, I would recommend using the portion. So when you share the screen, go to advanced and do portion of screen, and then you would highlight that slide preview. So then your students only see that and you see the notes at the bottom. Now, if you're in a classroom, obviously the students in the classroom would see the entire screen on the board. If you have two screens, then you choose which one you want to share. Make sure you're sharing the main view and not the speaker or presentation view that has your notes on it. Yes, you are. Um, I just read a chat that came through. You as a host are able to spotlight 
a speaker or a student or yourself for everyone and send it out. And that is their forced view. I believe they can still choose if they want to be in speaker view or gallery view. But if they choose gallery view, you'll be that first image and you'll be stuck to the page no matter which page they are on. OK, so I'm going to move along because I have a few other things to talk about. So polling. One quick thing before we get into polling, I will tell you if you are connected on more than one device, say you also connected on your laptop or an iPad, polling does not work. You cannot launch a poll when you're connected on more than one device. We found that out the hard way recently um, when an instructor tried to do it in class. But if I choose to do a poll in class, I click on poll. Here I have one that I have already created. Hopefully you can see that. Can someone nod if you can see? Yes, okay. So as um, a normal participant, you would not typically see this. You only see this because I'm allowing you to see all of my Zoom windows. So this is what you would see. When I choose to launch the poll, you then should have this window pop up where you can answer the poll. So as the polls are coming in, I as the host see the percentages of the answers coming through. So I will let this go um, a little bit more. We see how we have 47% have voted. You will see this while people are voting. At any time, you can end the poll. So if you say, I'm only going to give you 35 seconds to answer this, so you better be quick. Once you end it, they no longer have access to it. You can display the results, which only shows the students the percentage of the answers. You, however, have access to who answered what. So you can get that in your Zoom reports. And um, that would be just on the Zoom website reports. And then there's a polling option to see those. So I do want to show you one other thing with polling. So let me stop that. Relaunch polling. No, I don't want to do that. OK. So I only created one poll for this. So I do have to clear all of this out. Actually. OK, do you see my browser browser now? OK. So I will show you how I created that poll first and then explain to you something that I can't show you because I created a poll. So if I have a meeting that I've created and I choose to edit it, actually, sorry, I don't have to edit it. I click on the title and I have all my meeting details. I can scroll down to the bottom and choose poll. So this is where I can add a poll before class. So I can enter a title for the poll and have it have multiple questions, or I can just have one question, which is what I had before. You can add um, polls to recurring meetings. So you can go ahead and add poll that you're going to launch next week, but not launch it yet. And typically, if you haven't added a poll yet, when you are in the Zoom session and you click on polls, it will ask you if you want to add a poll. That will then take you to that page I was just on. So it pops you out of the Zoom meeting. You stay connected, but it pops you out of the Zoom meeting and you enter the questions. Now, this one was a multi-choice. So if you teach for more than one school, you could have selected that. You can do single choice and multiple choice. And those are multi-choice. Multi those are the only options for polling. So I apologize for the confusion there on my part um, with that, but okay, I see, yes. Let me show that one more time. So after I have scheduled a meeting, I simply click on it. 
scroll to the bottom, choose poll, and then I can add a poll. You can make the responses anonymous, but typically when you share the results in a class, the students don't see who answered what. So if you make it anonymous, you also won't get that report of who answered what at the end. So poll everywhere, just to mention this, is not associated with Zoom. This would be something that you display by sharing your screen and opening your poll everywhere. And I am not going to get into that right now because I have a few other things that I want to show you about Zoom in general. So before I move on, are there any questions about polls or anything I've covered thus far? Okay. Okay. Okay, I see one question. Can you hide the results of a poll? So if you don't click on that share results with students, they don't see it. So hiding it would just be not sharing it. Now you saw it the whole time, but that's just because I'm showing you what it looks like from my end as the host so that you can see. Um, so the poll results are found in your Zoom reports. And unfortunately, I cannot show you exactly what that would look like because as a Zoom admin, I have a completely different view and I don't wanna confuse you, but I'll release a screenshot step-by-step -step of that with this recording um, in the materials. So you can have access to where you can find the poll results. Okay, I am gonna pause and let any questions from the chat that need to be addressed. Yes, we have a quick question from okay. Stephen. Um, it's about the dual monitor settings. Um, he's asking the what's the difference or how does the dual monitor and single monitor settings work? Right. Okay, so if I only have one monitor, then that's what I'm working with, right? But if I have two monitors on my computer, you know, dual monitor setup, I have to, in my settings, under general, check this box for use dual monitors. So it simply allows you, when you share your screen, instead of having that film strip I discussed, when you share your screen and you have this checked, the entire gallery view moves to the other screen. And by other screen, I mean whichever one you did not share. When you have two monitors and you click share screen, it gives you the option, which one do you want to share? So whichever one you don't share gets the gallery view. Okay, so we did have an entire session on breakout rooms yesterday, so I'm not gonna go into full detail about that, but I will show you as the host, you have option for breakout rooms here. If you have pre-assigned breakout rooms, you um, will also have that option and you can just open those. Um, I recommend, and I believe this session yesterday also mentioned, the new let participants choose room might replace pre-assigned breakout rooms if you trust your students to go to the correct room. So that will take away your responsibility and put it on the students. So you can create breakout rooms automatically, assign them automatically. You choose the number of rooms. It's going to tell you the breakdown based on the participants you have in your session at this time. You can assign manually, which means I have to choose Michael goes to this room, Roseanne goes to this room, Tom goes to this room. That would be time intensive if you have more than 10 people. Um, and then let participants choose room. You pick the number of rooms. You can give them names or just call them one, two, three, four, five. When you open it, students have to choose where they want to go. Um, let me sh just show you uh, a couple settings once it opens. So if you do automatically, you have your list. You can choose, oh, I want to move Steven to another room. You have some options here. Allow, you can change it to allow participants to choose room once you've done this. 
allowing participants to return to the main session at any time lets them have a button that says leave breakout room and go back to main session automatically move all assigned participants into breakout rooms stops the students from having to say yes okay i'll join this room and it could save you some time you can have breakout rooms set to be a certain number of minutes so you don't have to keep an eye on your watch and say oh it's been five minutes let me close them now you can also set a countdown for after closing the breakout rooms i would recommend making this under 60 seconds i like 10 seconds if especially if they know how long it's going to be because once you say close rooms or the time is up, then you're gonna have 60 more seconds of the countdown before they all come back to the main session. Personal preference, but I don't like it to be that long. Okay, any basic top level questions about breakout rooms? If there are more advanced questions, we can talk later about it or you can rewatch the session from yesterday because we only have about 10 minutes left. Okay, so this is the last thing I wanna cover, but it's one of the most important um, or one of the most widely used. And that is, so I'll answer this really quickly. Setting up breakout rooms before the class starts, um, that would only be if you have pre-assigned, because if you go into those settings and you say you wanna create one breakout room. So if you don't have any participants yet, it won't let you go above one. Until you get six participants, you can't choose five. So it, it's based on the number of participants that are in your meeting at that time. Okay. So right now I am going to spotlight my video. And the reason I have my camera or my virtual background off. I'm also going to stop sharing. Okay. So I want to show you my laptop. This is the Zoom app on a different computer, right? So if I want to share my laptop screen, but I don't want to join the meeting, I don't want my audio or video, but I want to share my screen. I can choose the share screen option and it's gonna ask me for the meeting ID. I should have written that down before, but I will look it up. Okay. If I type in the meeting ID, and choose to share my screen, it's warning me that the meeting is being recorded, but I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to choose my desktop. So now I'm sharing my laptop screen, even though this device is not connected as a participant in the meeting. I am simply sharing my screen without joining the meeting. So I'm going to stop that. You can also do that on an iPad. You have that same button on an iPad, share screen. And I know, oh, it's not backwards, but same button on an iPad, share screen. So I have some questions, why would I want to do that? So on the iPad, you might want to do that if you're in the classroom, but you wanna use the iPad, or even if you're at your computer, but you wanna use the iPad to use the digital whiteboard. Or if you're in the classroom, and you need to use the classroom microphone and camera, but you don't wanna bring a jump drive, you don't have your network drive set up, all of your stuff is on your laptop, you're used to your laptop, so you wanna share your screen from your laptop. Those are some reasons why you would do that. Now you can join as a participant, um, but you would not connect audio if you're connected on another device, because I, if you haven't heard the sound that it makes, try it sometime and you will never do it. Um, another reason that you could do this 
is if you have a student that needs to give a presentation. They're in class or they're not. And um, they obviously nowadays, they don't want to come up to the podium and touch everything you've been touching. So they want to use their own computer. They could simply click share screen, type in the meeting ID, and then their content is displayed in the class to the students, no matter if you're completely virtual or SME flex. Okay, so those are the things that I wanted to cover. There was actually one more thing, but I saw some earlier, your reactions and your raising hand features. But I think most of you um, have seen those. So students have the option to give you some reactions. Okay, so we have five to six, seven minutes. Let's answer some questions. So we have a question um, where Michael asked if you share screen from another device, do both machines have to be running the same Zoom version? No, no. Um, the, let me see. Yeah, no, because I have an update available on my laptop and I'm up to date on my desktop. So no, um, no, they don't have to be running the same version. Now, um, if you, one thing I wanna mention, and I'll share my screen again so you can see this quickly. So if you are not signed in on the second device, you will either need to um, choose the security tab here and allow participants to share their screen. Otherwise, when you try to share, you're gonna get, you can't share your screen, you don't have authority, or you need to sign in I'm not sure I understand. Me neither sometimes. Okay, other questions? Um, yes, there's another question from Marta. She asked if there is a way to disable, uh, just a minute, to disable um, chat, but still have questions submitted to the host. Yes. Okay, let me share my screen again. So on, can you see my chat window here? Okay, so if I click the three dots at the bottom of my chat window, it lets me decide who participants can chat with. Everyone publicly and directly means they can send a message to everyone or one student can message another student and I'll never see it. Everyone publicly means they can't message each other, but when they chat, it goes to everyone or I can change it to host only. Then they can only chat directly to me. I can also change it to no one so that chat is completely disabled. And you can do that on the fly in the meeting. Chat three dots. And then I do want to bring up the other security options that we saw earlier. So if you click on the security tab, this is where we have set that at the current time you can't unmute yourself. So you're only chatting. You can also determine here if they can chat or not. You can allow them to share their screen. You can lock the meeting so that no one else can enter. You can even suspend all participant activities, which turns off everyone's video mutes everyone, stops screen share. This has been added in the case of Zoom bombing. If something happens and is inappropriate and you don't know who it is, you can just stop everything. All right, so I think we have time for maybe one more question. I will keep a record of the chat and make sure that all questions are addressed if there are any that we did not get to. This has been recorded and we'll release more um, resources along with it. 
I think we have one last question. Um, Scooter asked if there is a way to join on a laptop, use iPad for screen share and spotlight iPad. So the iPad stays front and center. So if you're using the iPad for screen share, screen share is always gonna be spotlighted. No matter what or who is sharing, that's the largest thing. So students do have the option to go into side-by-side -side mode and change which is bigger, the videos or the screen. But if you're using the iPad to share the screen, it is going to be the largest. Otherwise, if it's two videos, yes, you have the option to spotlight one or up to nine videos. All right. Well, again, we'll make sure anything that wasn't answered in the chat is addressed. And if you have specific questions about Zoom, feel free to reach out to your Academic Technology Service Director, ATSD, or send in a help desk ticket. And I hope I was helpful and not too rambly. <laughs> and have a great day and thank you all.